Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 8. Brooke Gomez, a luminous talent in interior design and reality TV. Brooke Gomez, renowned for her exceptional work as an interior designer and her presence in the world of reality TV, was found deceased in her Upper East Side apartment in New York City. The news of her untimely passing at age 49 has deeply saddened fans and colleagues alike. Gomez, a regular in the second season of Bethany Frankel's Bravo reality show Bethany Ever After, was discovered in an advanced state of decomposition, indicating she had been deceased for several days. Her death came as a shock to those who knew her, sparked by concern from a friend who had not heard from her in over a week. Police, finding no wounds on her body, do not suspect foul play. An autopsy by the city medical examiner is expected to reveal the cause of her death. Her contributions to the world of interior design were significant and diverse. Notably, Gomez played a key role in renovating and remodeling the $5 million Tribeca home of Real Housewives star Bethany Frankel. The daughter of celebrated decorator Mariette Himes Gomez, she inherited a keen eye for design and a visionary approach to her work. Her list of A-list clients included stars like Michael J. Fox and Sigourney Weaver, underlining her status in the industry. The loss of Brooke Gomez is not only a loss to the design world, but also to the many who were inspired by her creativity, her vibrant personality, and her ability to transform spaces and lives. Tribute to Brooke Gomez. Number 7. Phil Quartararo, the visionary leader in the music industry. Phil Quartararo, a towering figure in the music industry and former head of Warner Brothers and Virgin Records, passed away at 67 leaving behind a legacy shaped by his contributions to the success of numerous artists. Quartararo, affectionately known as Phil Q, succumbed to pancreatic cancer, as reported by Billboard. Quartararo's impact on the industry was immense, playing a pivotal role in the success of artists like the Spice Girls and Linkin Park. His warm personality and firm handshake made him a beloved figure at countless concerts. He was known for his genuine support and belief in his artists, as echoed by Paula Abdul in her statement mourning his loss. His career milestones included serving as president of Warner Brothers Records until 2002, leading EMI Music's distribution wing, and holding board positions at Gibson and Fender Guitars. He also contributed as a consultant for Shazam, and was named president of Janet Jackson's Rhythm Nation Records in 2016, a role he fulfilled for three years. Until his death, Quartararo was actively involved with the Hello Group Entertainment Company, a post he had held since 2019. Phil Quartararo's passing marks the end of an era in the music industry. His vision, leadership, and passion for music have left an indelible mark, influencing generations of artists and music executives. His legacy is not only in the records and artists he nurtured, but also in the warmth and kindness he extended to everyone he worked with. Tribute to Phil Quartararo Number 6. Dave Young, a titan of Purdue. Football and inspirational tight end. Former Purdue football All-American tight end. Dave Young celebrated for his remarkable achievements in college football, passed away on November 21st at the age of 64. Young's legacy as perhaps the greatest tight end in Purdue's history is marked by his outstanding performances and record-setting plays. During his tenure from 1977 to 1980, Young, in tandem with quarterback Mark Herman, formed one of the Big Ten's most formidable quarterback-receiver duos. He led the Big Ten in receptions in both 1979 and 1980, and was the conference's leader in touchdown receptions in 1979. Young's career at Purdue was nothing short of extraordinary, culminating in 180 catches, 
for 2,316 yards and 27 touchdowns, a record surpassed only by Brian Alford. Young's impact was pivotal in several of Purdue's historic victories, including the game-winning touchdown in the 1979 Blue Bonnet Bowl. This triumph was part of a remarkable era for Purdue football, including wins in the 1978 Peach Bowl and the 1980 Liberty Bowl. His performance in these games contributed to Purdue football's enduring legacy. After his illustrious college career, Young was selected in the second round of the 1981 NFL Draft by the New York Giants. His professional career included significant contributions to both the Giants and the Indianapolis Colts, with notable achievements including catching three touchdowns in his NFL tenure. Dave Young's passing is a significant loss to the world of football. He will be remembered not just for his stats and records, but also for the spirit, determination, and leadership he brought to the field. His legacy continues to inspire aspiring football players and fans alike. Tribute to Dave Young. Number 5. Eddie Linden, a beacon of poetry and political passion. Eddie Linden, a prominent Scottish poet, editor of the influential poetry magazine Aquarius, and a passionate political activist, passed away on November 19 at the age of 88 in Maida Vale, London. His journey from an illegitimate child in Motherwell, Scotland, to becoming a pivotal figure in the poetry world is a tale of resilience and dedication to the arts and social causes. His political awakening was catalyzed by joining the Young Communist League, which paved his path to London. There, his encounters with figures like Catholic priest Anthony Ross and journalist Douglas Hyde shaped his views and solidified his commitment to social justice, including involvement with the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament and the Catholic Worker Movement. Lyndon's literary prowess came to the fore with the founding of Aquarius in 1969, a magazine that became a nurturing ground for British, Irish, and international poets. Through this, he played a crucial role in the development of numerous literary talents, supported by his relationships with renowned poets and writers. His personal poetry, including works like City of Razors, reflected his acute observations and experiences, resonating with audiences for its raw honesty and depth. Beyond poetry, Linden's life was a testament to his unyielding commitment to his beliefs, be it in the realms of politics, social causes, or literature. His biographical and cultural contributions, captured in works like Who is Eddie Linden and various portraits, further immortalize his influence and character. As the literary and political worlds mourn the loss of Eddie Linden, his legacy remains a beacon of inspiration showcasing the power of the written word and unwavering dedication to societal change. Tribute to Eddie Linden. Number 4. Anna Kanakis an emblem of artistic versatility and grace Italy mourns the loss of Anna Kanakis, a versatile and celebrated figure in the world of entertainment and literature, who passed away at the age of 61 after a battle with illness. Her journey from a beauty queen to a respected actress and writer is a testament to her multifaceted talent and enduring appeal. Born in Messina, Kanakis's ascent to fame began when she was crowned Miss Italy in 1977 at just 15 years old making her the youngest ever to win the title. This achievement catapulted her into the limelight, leading to a flourishing career in modeling and acting. In the 1980s, she became a familiar face in Italian cinema, delivering memorable performances in films directed by renowned filmmakers like Castellano, Pipolo, and Sergio Martino. Her roles in films such as Attila Flagello di Dio and Occhio, Malocchio, Presamolo e Finocchio, showcased her versatility and charisma, earning her a special place in the hearts of the Italian audience. Kanakis's creative pursuits were not limited to acting. She also made significant contributions to television and literature. In recent years, she focused her talents on writing, 
penning novels that delved into historical narratives and complex characters, further cementing her status as a multifaceted artist. Her personal life was as rich and diverse as her professional one. Kanakis was married twice, first to musician Claudio Simonetti and then to Marco Maratti Foscarini, a descendant of Venetian nobility. She even ventured into politics, briefly serving as the National Cultural and Entertainment Officer for the UDR party. Anna Kanakis' legacy in the arts is indelible. Her ability to transcend genres and mediums, touching the lives of many through her performances and writings, will be remembered and celebrated. Tribute to Anna Kanakis. Number three, Peter Tarnoff, a diplomat with a delicate touch in crisis management. Peter Tarnoff, an esteemed diplomat recognized for his critical roles in international relations and crisis management, passed away on November 1st at his San Francisco home due to Parkinson's disease, aged 86. Tarnoff's diplomatic journey was marked by significant accomplishments, including being the secret envoy in the U.S.-Cuba communications under President Clinton and playing a pivotal role in the Iran hostage crisis negotiations in 1979. Born in New York City on April 19, 1937, Tarnoff's international exposure began at age 12 when his family moved to Montreal. He excelled in languages, particularly French, and pursued higher education at Colgate University, the University of Chicago, and the École Nationale d'Administration in France. His career in the Foreign Service saw his first posting in Saigon, where he worked under Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge and was injured in a tragic embassy bombing in 1965. Tarnoff's diplomatic finesse was further highlighted when he served as a senior aide to Secretary of State Cyrus Vance during President Carter's administration. His discreet yet effective strategies were crucial in the safe return of Americans in the Iranian hostage crisis, later dramatized in the film Argo. His negotiations also extended to secretive meetings with Fidel Castro, showcasing his ability to navigate complex political landscapes. Tarnoff's legacy is remembered for his exceptional understanding of government workings, particularly in crises. His partnership with Mark Danner at UC Berkeley in teaching crisis management and his international engagements reflected his deep knowledge and ability to articulate complex government functions. Tribute to Peter Tarnoff. Number two, Mike Bickle, a local hero, an Argyle's football legend. Mike Bickle, a football icon and one of Plymouth Argyle's most prolific goal scorers, passed away at the age of 79, leaving behind a legacy cherished by the Green Army and the football community. Born in 1944, Bickle's journey from a local talent to a star at his hometown club is a story that resonates with the spirit of football. Bickle's career with Argyle where he scored 74 goals in 195 appearances, began at the age of 21. He was spotted playing for St. Austell in the Southwestern League, an opportunity that propelled him into the professional arena. His early days were marked by a dual role as a milkman and a footballer, a testament to his dedication and love for the game. In December 1965, Bickle made his first team debut under manager Derek Ufton. His impact was immediate and spectacular netting seven goals in his first four games, including a hat-trick and a memorable 6-0 FA Cup victory against Corbytown. Bickle finished the season as Argyle's top scorer, a feat he achieved for four consecutive seasons through to 1969. A standout moment in his career was the Boxing Day match of 1969 against Torquay United, where he scored four goals in a 6-0 triumph, an achievement he had previously managed in a match against Cardiff. His remarkable ability to score consistently made him a fan favorite and a key player in the team's successes. After retiring, Bickle remained a fixture in Plymouth, working at Devonport Dockyard and frequently visiting Home Park. His legacy as one of Argyle's greatest ever forwards continues to inspire 
and is fondly remembered by fans and peers alike. Tribute to Mike Bickle. Today's top headlines. News 1. The Ukrainian sports community is in mourning following the tragic death of Serhai Lysiuk, a celebrated kickboxing champion and national hero. Lysiuk, known for his remarkable achievements in kickboxing, including multiple European and world titles, succumbed to severe injuries in an intensive care unit. The Taras Shevchenko National University in Chernihiv, where Lysiuk was a revered figure, announced the devastating news on Facebook, expressing deep condolences to his wife, Olena Bibik, and his family and friends. The university acknowledged the overwhelming support and prayers from the community during this challenging period. News 2. As the nation marks the 60th anniversary of President John F. Kennedy's assassination, Clint Hill, the Secret Service agent who made a valiant effort to save the president, opens up about the haunting day. Now 91, Hill is still known as the man who leaped onto JFK's car during the Dallas shooting in 1963. Assigned to First Lady Jacqueline Kennedy, Hill had established a personal connection with the Kennedys, contrasting the formal nature of his previous assignments. Recalling the fateful day in Dallas, he describes the sudden shift from a cheerful crowd to chaos as he heard a shot and saw Kennedy's reaction. Hill's instinctive sprint to the limousine and his attempt to shield the first couple is a lasting image of that day. Hill admits he struggled with guilt and PTSD since the assassination, revealing a period of depression and alcohol dependence post-retirement from the Secret Service at 43. His participation in a 60 Minutes interview in 1975 was a rare public reflection on the events. News 3. The Rainbow Bridge, a vital link between the US and Canada at Niagara Falls, New York, was closed after a vehicle explosion. Officials believe there are fatalities. The incident began when a vehicle crossing from Canada to the US was stopped for a security check. It sped up and crashed into a second checkpoint, causing an explosion. Authorities found a suitcase at the scene, potentially an explosive device. All Niagara River bridges are closed as a precaution. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is coordinating with the FBI, and President Biden is briefed. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and New York City Mayor Eric Adams have heightened security measures at border crossings and strategic city points, especially ahead of Thanksgiving. News 4. Netflix actor Kevin Tovar tragically passed away. In a shocking and tragic incident, Colombian actor Kevin Andres Munoz Tovar, celebrated for his role in Netflix's Lava Peros, was found deceased on November 20th in the city of Tulua. The circumstances surrounding his passing are heartrending with Tovar discovered in a compromised state and bearing injuries that suggest a violent encounter. The local authorities, responding promptly to this distressing situation, have apprehended a 19-year-old suspect, thanks to valuable information provided by the community. The investigation into this sorrowful event is ongoing, as the community and fans mourn the loss of a talented actor taken too soon. News 5. In a heartbreaking turn of events, Brazilian influencer Gideoni Felix known for his captivating content featuring his dogs, has died in a tragic motorbike accident. The incident occurred in Bahia State, Brazil, where Felix, aged 40, reportedly lost control of his motorcycle and tragically plummeted off a cliff. The accident, which happened on November 18th, resulted in severe head trauma for Felix, leading to his immediate passing at the scene. His wife, also involved in the accident, was rushed to a hospital in Unapolis and is currently reported to be in stable condition. Gideoni Felix, who had amassed a following of over 1 million on TikTok, was cherished for his engaging posts with his beloved pit bulls. The news of his untimely death has left his fans and followers in Brazil and beyond deeply saddened, with many paying touching tributes to the internet star. Number 1. Colette Mays, a centenarian legacy in piano music, Colette Mays, the distinguished French pianist renowned for her extraordinary longevity and musical brilliance, passed away at the venerable age of 109. Born in the shadows of World War I in 1914, Mays's life was a rich tapestry of historical and musical epics. Educated under the tutelage of iconic figures like Alfred Cortot and Nadia Boulanger at the École Normale de Musique de Paris, 
Mays's formative years were steeped in the classical music tradition of the early 20th century. Her journey through the ever-evolving landscape of music saw her embrace and interpret works spanning various genres and eras. In her later years, Mays's passion for music remained undiminished. Her Facebook page, a testament to her engagement with modern technology and her fans, stayed active until her final days. Her longevity and dedication to piano music endeared her to millions worldwide, transcending generations and geographical boundaries. Earlier this year, Mays made history by releasing 109 Ons de Piano to celebrate her 109th birthday, becoming the oldest pianist to release an album. This remarkable album, a collection of 19 pieces, featured Mays's interpretations of works by Claude Debussy, George Gershwin, Robert Schumann, Ruchi Sakamoto, and Astor Piazzolla. The album also showcased collaborations with concert guitarist Bertrand Kaz, further highlighting Mays's versatility and willingness to explore musical partnerships. The passing of Colette Mays marks the end of an era in the world of classical music. Her life, spanning over a century, was a living bridge between the past and present of piano music. Her legacy, encapsulated in her recordings and the memories of those she inspired, continues to resonate in the hearts of piano enthusiasts around the globe. Tribute to Colette Mays.